Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Worms, the board game by Mantic. It is a two to four player game that takes roughly 20 to 45 minutes to play. And in the game Worms, well, before you know about the board game, you should know that this is an IP based on an original video game called Worms and Worms War and Worms War Armageddon, games I played as a kid. That's all about having a team of worms and basically having an arsenal of different weapons and going up against other teams, whether it be your friends on a couch co-op or AI or both, and trying to eliminate everybody else's worms except for yours until you're the last remaining with tons of different map settings and like water and fire and lava and all kinds of crazy stuff that can happen in the game. There's even like advanced, like all kinds of cool stuff. Um, you're basically just a tactics type of crazy party game that's all about destroying your opponents. And this is the same thing as that. It comes with all the old unique weapons from the original video game and all the worms you'll come to know and love. If you have never heard of this, you're in for a treat. I'm going to explain how the game is set up, of course, and how to play it, and then our review. To begin set for the game Worms, the first thing you will do is give every single player one of these large boards here. These are going to be starting areas, they're going to be or areas where you're going to be used to create the game board. You're also going to need this dial here along with this tile here. Take the dial and the tile and place it down anywhere on the game board in front of all players and then take this little spinner and put it on any one that you want. For the starting game, you can just simply choose two. Then each player in turn order is going to take their piece and place it adjacent to or next to the, uh, the dial here so that it connects. And then finally, after you have had both players or all three or four players connect their pieces so that all land pieces are connected to each other and at least one of them is connected to the dial, then you're ready for setting up your pieces. Each player is going to get their own unique set of worms. These are little miniature worms that have baseball bats and Uzis and girders and mines and all kinds of cool stuff, bazookas. And you're also going to get one of each of the items in the game. These are all called things, including the worms. You're going to be getting a crate, supply crate, a mine, and an oil barrel. And on your turn, I'm going to go in, in turn order clockwise, you'll place one of your things anywhere on the game board. But remember, you can only have up to three things of any player's things on each space. I'll take a worm, I'll place it down. Callie will take a worm, she'll place it down. Maybe I'll choose a mine and put it somewhere. And then Callie will go ahead and choose and put a worm somewhere. I'll place a worm, she'll place a supply crate. I'll place a worm, she'll place a worm. And it's just going to rinse and repeat from there until all of the pieces have coexisted on the game board somewhere. And then you'll have a board that looks something like this. After you've done that, make sure that the first player has this little token here. It's a little targeting token. Make sure that each player has one of these turn order cards as well as a reference. And everybody has a starting hand. To begin the game, each player is going to get a girder, a bazooka, a ninja rope, and an Uzi. These cards are four of the five cards you get, which means you'll be drawing one extra card from the starting deck. After everybody has five cards from the starting deck, you can take this starting deck of cards, which have a black background, and you can go ahead and remove it. You won't be using this anymore. Um, otherwise, you'll have a deck of supply cards. These are cards with the white borders, and you'll notice that the weapons are either with a red top outline or a yellow one. Make sure it's shuffled up and placed next to all players. And the last thing is the drop deck as far as setup goes. The drop deck is going to have three drop cards for each player playing the game. So right now I have a two-player game, so I have six drop cards placed on top of this card, the Armageddon card. There are multiple Armageddon cards, you'll just choose one at random and put it face down the very bottom of the deck of drop cards and go ahead and take them and place them to form a deck next to all players. Everything else is just stuff you'll set out within reach of all players. You're going to have crater tokens, fire tokens, additional mines and additional uh, oil, you'll have additional supply crates, uh, this little danger token or danger die. And then you'll also have a bunch of water spaces. Um, there's also reference cards for each of the different things in the game, whether it be supply, water, mines, oil, craters, and fires. Make sure you place it somewhere within reach of all players so that they can see what they all do in case they need to check out uh, what exactly happens how, when, when you interact with these things. And the rest of the stuff, all the extra worms and like locations and whatnot, if you're not playing with those things, you can set them aside. After that, you're done, you're ready to go. Grab your dice and let's get started playing some worms. 
Worms is a tactical game that plays similar to the video game. In the video game, uh, it's kind of a couch co-op. A couch co-op is where you sit down on one TV and everybody who's playing plays with you in the same room. And I love that. There's not a whole lot of games that do that anymore. So when I see them, I usually pick them up. Basically, you'll start off with one of your worms and that worm will move that worm will choose an item that they have, they'll fire it at something, and then hopefully destroy that something. Or, if they're lucky, a bunch of some things. When your worm goes to zero health, it blows up, and if you have no worms left on your team, you're done. Once you've interacted with your worm, the next player will get a chance to go, they will do their thing, as well as trying to pick up more supplies for more weapons, and that's, it just goes back and forth like that. It's a very simple, very straightforward tactic game that basically all has to do with how you choose to aim and how you choose to shoot, and um, making sure that you check to see wind direction and the power of the wind, the velocity, so you can get the best angle possible when you're trying to defeat other players' worms. The board game is basically the same thing. There are some differences and I'll go through them as we explain this and especially in my review, but what's gonna happen is you're going to get to play your turn. Your turn has eight phases. The first phase is you can activate a worm. When you activate your worm, you check to see if you have any supply crates under you. If you do, you'll simply draw a card from the deck here and put it into your hand. And whenever you take a supply crate, uh, you're gonna remove it off the board and put it back into the supply area. After you've chosen to activate your worm, you'll have to check to see if it's damaged. If a worm is damaged, it's laying on its side. If it's laying on its side, you can bring it upright, but only if that's the worm you choose to activate. If you have multiple worms that have been damaged, you can only choose one of them to turn back up to basically heal itself. Then you're going to get two actions, number three and four, to inch and or jump. And you can choose inch or jump, and then once again, inch or jump. To inch, you move one space to an adjacent location. So if I wanted my worm to go from one space to another, I would simply inch it over. If I don't want to inch, I can actually jump. Jumping will let you jump up to two spaces. However, when you jump, you'll actually be rolling this directional die. And based on this die, it might kind of push you one way or another way. Now there's a bunch of charts and graphs, which I'll show you now, uh, that based on how you roll could mean some dire situations for you as well as for your opponents depending on how you shoot your shots. But as far as jumping goes, make sure you choose the best spot otherwise it might be the end of you. After you've chosen to inch slash move or jump slash jump, uh, to up to two times you can choose to inch inch, jump jump, jump inch, inch jump, it's up to you. Then you move on to the next portion which is play a weapon card. When you play weapon cards you'll be choosing one from your hand and there's a wide variety of weapons. There's handguns and Uzis, ninja ropes, bazookas, girders, these are all the basic type of weapons but there are so many more and in worms some items are better than others and that's the case as well in the board game. Minigun, homing missile, fire punch, mortar, jetpacks, booby traps, concrete donkey and it just keeps going on from there my favorite of course is like a mine strike or a napalm strike the ones with a gold border are the best ones but how do they work so on the cards you're going to have the uh, top uh, portion is going to tell you what it is and then it'll also say that it's a weapon uh, then in the middle portion is how you're going to interact with the card and you'll check to see what they do so the first one um, in this case would be like a target symbol it's going to say that that's what you try and do and whenever you have that symbol there, you're basically going to look at the orange text box. It'll say target, a direct hex within two spaces. And then you can damage any non-one worm thing. And so basically I could go ahead and say I'm going to target one thing in a hex that's one or two spaces away. That thing that's not a worm can now be damaged. And then you'll check your little cards to see what they do. Mines can blow up, oil can splatter into fire, and boxes can be destroyed. Um, there are also uh, lines on the card after you finish doing whatever it says. You'll go to the next line and then the next line. There are three main things you'll do. You could basically inch slash jump on the card. You can choose to use the card's ability, which is to target something and usually blow something up. And then you can also hopefully draw an extra card from the deck. It's literally just going to tell you on the card what it does. And each card functions a little differently. So the Uzi, for instance, will let you inch slash jump. Then it will let you target a direct hex within two spaces and damage a thing. And then once again, inch or jump. So it's basically like move, shoot, and move again. The ninja rope is basically going to let you target a hex uh, four, up, up to four spaces away, but it has like an accuracy of four, uh, place an active worm in that space. So you'll do that, and then you'll draw a new supply card. And there's a bunch of different cards that do a bunch of different things. Now, the other thing to note is accuracy. Accuracy is basically like 
the, the amount of likelihood you're going to be doing whatever it is on the space you want to do. So if I have an accuracy of four, and I want to basically go uh, and aim one, th have my worm aim two, one, two spaces away, I'll lose one accuracy because I'm not adjacent to it. Based on the accuracy that I have after losing accuracy, based on how far away I am, I'll roll these dice. When I roll these dice, I will then check to see the different options, and based on my options, I'll have to select one. The numbers are going to refer to the wind direction, and based on whatever that number is, I can select it, and that is where my shot will be angled towards. So if I choose a space, like let's say I choose one right here, and um, I choose three, and let's say I check one, two, three, instead of going to this space, I'll actually go to this one here. If it's five, maybe I would go uh, uh, one, two, three, four, five, and I'd go down here. There's also the wind, which will direct you based on where the wind is located on this little t this little chart here. Um, and then the final one is a direct hit, my favorite. That's always nice. You shoot, it goes exactly where you want it to go. More dice gives you more options and has a more likelihood of you hitting your target exactly where you'd like. But because of the wind, you always have to try and angle your shots as best as you can to make the most likely outcome be the best one for you. And that's basically how all these cards work. There's a bunch of different graphs in the game, like uh, scattering and accuracy and things that like kind of cluster bomb and blow up. They're all found in the rule book. And uh, you're just gonna basically roll these dice based on whatever accuracy it might be. And then you'll pick one and hopefully it works out for the best. Sometimes it can just work out not in your favor. After you're done playing your weapon card, you'll end your turn. You'll draw a drop card, which is the other deck as opposed to the supply deck, and you'll do what it says. A lot of them say stuff like, place a certain number of supply crates down, and also place some oil down. Or some might say, place multiple supply crates. And uh, that's basically, like, there's supplies in mines, but the idea is stuff will fall down from the sky, land on the areas where hopefully your worms are, and pick them up. Unless they're mines, hopefully they don't land on those spaces. Up until the point where, there's only just this last card here. This is like the big, big, like Armageddon type card, which I'll explain in a second. So you draw one of these cards, you do what it says, you pass your token to the next player and they rinse and repeat. You go, they'll go ahead and once again, activate a worm, heal their worm, move up to two times, play a weapon card in their turn, draw a drop card and pass the token. Eventually what happens is yes, you will draw this Armageddon card. When this is the last card in the deck, this effect will repeat over and over and over again up until the game is over. And the game is over when there's only one team left remaining. Um, and that's basically how the game is played. There was a multitude of different things in the game that, that interact in basic different ways. Um, and there are a bunch of different ways that weapons can interact, as well as there are cards like the supply, the drop cards that will actually have the wind change in a certain direction, which will roll a die and that will change the wind. But I think you basically get the idea of the game worms the board game. Let's tell you, let me tell you what I think about it now. For you Worms War, Worms War Armageddon, and Worms fans, this is going to be a game for you. It is basically just like the video game. Now, note, the video game is a nutty, zany, uh, semi-chance-based video game where you angle your best and try your best, and maybe in the video game you have a little bit more control over how the wind functions and how you can angle your shots, but there are some cases where you're just not going to get lucky. In the board game, that's how it functions. You'll pick a space. If it's not an accuracy-based shot, you're fine. You'll get away with whatever it is you want to do. However, big however, if it is, you are going to choose a spot, cross your fingers, tighten your butt, and then roll dice. And sometimes it'll go ploop in the water and you'll get nada. Sometimes it'll blow up right where you want it to. And then it'll explode into the next space where you'll want it to. And then the next space, and that's all your units. And then you take a bunch of damage. And it's just a bunch of random zany fun. Uh, this is not going to be the game for those people who are like hardcore strategy, blah, 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 blah. Like it has strategy in it. Don't get me wrong. And there is ways you can control certain things and how you utilize the wind and how you choose your spots to gauge percentages. With more players comes more landmass, which comes a more likelihood for you to at least hit a space. And with less players, there's less landmass and it's more likely for you to ploop. <laughs> Plooping is falling into the water. Um, 
that's just how this game is. This game is kind of a mix of like a party game meets a tactics game with a bunch of zany crazy weapons. And there was a ton, and I mean a ton of weapons in this game. They did it justice when it came to the weapons and the types of weapons that they were, or the cluster. I remember all these weapons from the base game when I used to play a long time ago as a, as a kid, actually. I was playing probably in my teens, the original Worms War, Worms War Armageddon type of games. And this has all the old fun nostalgic pieces back. And they function very similarly to exactly what you would imagine. Um, the fact that they also have all these cards out is really, really nice. Like, I'm like, why do I need all this stuff? Well, after you go through maybe a game or two, you probably won't need them, but having them out for the first few games is nice, knowing that the mine will activate once you move into it and it's a 50-50. You'll be using this little chance token, and if it lands on the little skipping or jumping rope, you're safe, but if it lands on the explosion, you're in trouble. <laughs> this actually, the skipping rope is from the game where you want to end your turn and do nothing. You can just choose to skip rope and then pass your turn. I love how they just added all those little things to it. There's craters uh, that are, can be added to the game board where in general, they don't do anything on their own really, except for block a space on that little hex tile but eventually they can corrode the hex to the point where it becomes water. Um, they can also push other units off of the space, so you only have enough units for certain ones and they might have to be prodded off. Fire tokens that are maybe gonna burn you, but likely you might be okay, 50-50. When you walk into the hex of the tile, you're gonna have to find out. Mines are dangerous as well, so 50-50 of exploding or not, um, and I think they just destroy you. These little barrels will also basically let off some fire. My favorite, supply crates. These are wonderful. These pop on the ground all the time. You pick them up, you grab a new card, and hopefully that card is something like a banana bomb or a holy hand grenade, because that striking. is great. Air striking. Um, all, all of this feels very good. It feels very reminiscent to the game, uh, and I really, really love it. I love the dice, too. I like how they did the accuracy with the dice. When you're rolling dice, uh, you have an option of what is available. There are three guaranteed hits, there are three go with the wind, and then there's six zany options based on the directional. Probably my least favorite. Um, I do like how it was integrated with the game, but the problem is when you're playing with a small number of players, and because the board game and the game board is so small, which all of this is a prototype and is subject to change, and maybe there's gonna be a way where you can actually make your own maps and whatnot, but because it's so small, I blooped a lot. I missed the spots. I fired into the water just by happenstance, based on accuracy. It can just happen. It can happen a few times if you're very unlucky. And I, you can, and I was, get very unlucky in this game. Utilizing, I guess, your strengths and weaknesses is important based on the number of players you're playing with. I have learned that the first few games I played. Sometimes it's not good to use something like a bazooka. Firing too far away can cost you a ton of accuracy. Whereas a handgun, yes, you're gonna directly hit something. It might not be a worm, but maybe Maybe it's a mine, and maybe that mine has a worm that's not yours on that space. So utilizing your cards for the number of players is important. And I, I, while, it, while it does have that kind of like, you kind of start to get the feel of that, I really just wish the game board was a little bit bigger. I also wouldn't mind it if it was just a little like additional types of hexes and whatnot that could be added to the game board. Right now, as far as what I have, is gonna be the main base tiles, which are just like basic land, and then water. And water is pretty simple. It basically becomes dead zones, just like anything outside of the game board. If you fall into that for any reason whatsoever, you ploop and you disappear and you lose a worm, which is perfect, works just like the game does. But I'd like to see a few new little extra tiles um, and maybe even some extra different starting like tiles that can be added as different locations for the game. Um, the only other little qualm I have about this game is while it has all this the wonderful player turn and how targeting works and card references, this does a really great job. And then, and then all the different things in the game, well, not including your worms, but are, are, are made of cards. And it tells you like what they do when you walk into the space, when that thing gets damaged and, and what you need to roll. But what it doesn't do is, there's no cards for or on the back for all the different effects that involve rolling these dice. like. Scattering, one through six, move target or thing, one hex in the roll direction. If you get the wind symbol, it moves based on the wind, and if you get the target, it is exactly where it needs to be. And then there's one, I believe there's two, three, I think there's three, maybe four different charts in here, and I just really wish I really wish that they were like somewhere here so I didn't have to go and look in the rules for my first two games. Yes, just like the cards, 
after you've done it enough times, it's pretty simple. And I do know that one through six is based on this little thing here, based on where the wind is. Um, the target is exactly where it needs to be, and the wind is um, based on where the wind is blowing. Um, but there are different ones, and they function differently based on what it's going to be, whether it be direction, whether it be accuracy, or whether it be to scatter. And so having that somewhere on a card would be nice, just one card, I think. Otherwise, other than that, it's time to gush. I loved Worms as a kid. This was one of my favorite games. I played this more hours than I can count. Um, the way they introduced the miniatures of all the worms and how there was a ton of unique, wonderful, like stylized characters that have all of my favorite weapons. The bazooka, which is a super common one. The girder, this is the thing that lets you like plant like new pieces of land to get your worms up to be able to like, get that like sweet spot of how you shoot somebody. Uh, the baseball bat that just swings people off of the cliff and they just instantly ploop into the water. And, and like, <laughs> they got the little, the little zip line too that shoots out and your worm kind of like does like a Indiana Jones. All of these minis are, are great. They feel just like the game. They are very reminiscent. They're very nostalgic. They're very high detail, high quality. Uh, these are prototypes, so I'm going to guess they're going to even look even nicer when this is all done, obviously, but they work so well. While the game board is fine, the tokens and all the pieces are great. They work really well. These little barrels and crates, I, I imagine they'll be a little bit different as far as at least the crates go and probably the barrels in some way. Uh, the tokens here are probably gonna be a little different for the craters and the fire, but it gets the job done for this and it explains kind of how you're gonna position yourself, what spaces have too many things in them. And it, uh, it just, feels and flows like the game. I love how all the things interact. I love how all the cards interact and how all the different weapons interact. I love the idea of having drops throughout the game because that's how it worked in the video game. And then of course at the end, if you take too long, the game will end itself if you're not too careful. There are a few little bits of things and wording and whatnot, like I don't know, this flood one here says place a water hex in the hex with the most craters. So if I had a space with craters, it had the most craters, I would take a water hex and place it there. And then it says, place a supply crate in the same hex. Well, if I did that, it would go into water and it would bloop and it would disappear. And then it says, change the wind direction, which would make sense. You roll the die, uh, it goes and it stays exactly where it's at. And, and, and so some cards just have a little, you know, that's, that's stuff that's gonna be fixed later though. So I'm not super worried about that. So overall, this is a really fun little game. You have to not mind that sometimes things aren't going to go your way. A lot of funny situations are gonna occur. You might feel like you're ahead and then all of a sudden a cluster bomb hits all of your units and you're all down and now you have to try and work your way back up. Um, you might get the perfect shot. The wind direction might mess with something of yours. It's all played in pretty condensed uh, formation of just like tiles and worms everywhere. And it's just basically like a free for all tactic style game. Uh, this does the game justice. I really, really enjoyed this little guy here. I'm excited to see what it finally looks like. I really enjoyed playing with more than two players. Three and four players is definitely where it's at, especially four players, because there's just so many shenanigans that can happen. Players going up against each other, determining how many worms they have. Oh, you have two worms left, but they're damaged. This guy has like three, uh, uh, two worms that aren't damaged. You should pick him. And there's this like social interaction with it. it just reminds me of the couch cope and how this works. So yes, if you're interested in this game based on the IP, and you don't mind wacky shenanigans, or you just want something you've never heard of Worms before, and you want like a tactics party type of a game, then Worms is definitely something you should check out. It's a really cool little game, and I haven't seen a whole lot like this, so that's also good. So take a look down below, the link is in the description. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Worms, the board game by Mantic. If you're interested, there's a link down below in the description where you'll either be able to push the notify me when the campaign is live or the campaign will be live and you can simply go ahead and back the game. You can also go ahead and check out our website unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. There's a ton of great stuff on there and we do live streams every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. PST on Whatnot and on Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch, multi streamed. All right, guys, if you think I've earned your subscription, if you've watched more than one of our videos here, and if you like my new background, go ahead and give us a subscribe. Hit that subscribe button. Go ahead and hit that notification bell button if you want to see more of our videos here. And that's pretty much all I got. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to defeating your worms next time. The first of many.